Hello everyone, we will be presenting our paper which is titled Making a Case for 3D Convolutions for Object Segmentation in Videos. We tackle the problem where, given a video clip, we want to segment all pixels belonging to the dominant or salient objects in that clip. These objects may belong to arbitrary categories, so the task has to be tackled by jointly learning appearance and motion cues from the video. We can look at this example of a video from the Davis dataset to better understand the task. Here we have a person dancing and an audience watching him. Now, even though we have several persons in the video, only the dancer should be segmented since he is the dominant foreground object, whereas the audience is part of the background. This problem has been extensively studied over the years, and existing works typically involve using 2D CNNs. Features are first learned for each image frame in the video, and then various techniques are used to fuse temporal context to obtain the final segmentations. For example, a recent work uses attention to match features within and across multiple image frames, whereas another work models video frames as nodes in a graph neural network to learn temporal context. On the other hand, for video classification tasks, 3D CNNs have become the standard in recent years. They are an attractive option for video processing since they can jointly learn features across space and time. For segmentation tasks, however, we typically work with high image resolutions. This imposes computational constraints, making it difficult to trivially extend 3D CNNs for such tasks. However, there has been some progress recently with a couple of published works using 3D convolutions either fully or partially for segmentation tasks. But the issue here is that their performance still lags behind the state-of-the-art 2D CNN-based approaches. In our paper, we propose a compact 3D CNN with an encoder-decoder architecture. Our main contribution lies in proposing a design paradigm for 3D CNNs that makes them feasible for video segmentation tasks. For this, we use an efficient, lightweight encoder network and propose 3D variants of global convolution and refinement modules to enhance performance. Our method outperforms existing state of the arts on three different datasets by a large margin. Whereas existing approaches typically employ multi stream pipelines and heuristics, our approach is an end-to-end -end trainable encoder-decoder network which takes a video clip as input and produces the final segmentation masks with no need for additional post-processing. In terms of network architecture, for segmentation tasks, it is nowadays common to use ResNets with a low spatial stride and atlas convolutions. This technique was popularized by the DeepLab framework for semantic image segmentation and it yields good results but it has the drawback of increasing the memory footprint and runtime of the network. This in turn limits the depth and the size of the network which can be feasibly used. To mitigate this problem, we use an efficient channel separated backbone with a nominal spatial stride. Such a network was previously used for video action classification and it carries the advantage of having a dramatically smaller memory footprint. This allows us to use a 152 layer variant of ResNet as the encoder network. But even though we use a deeper encoder network, it still has fewer trainable parameters and a lower runtime than the backbones used by existing works. We use a decoder which is fully based on 3D convolutions. It takes as input the smallest resolution feature map from our encoder, pass it on to a 3D extension of the global convolutional network, and then further on to multiple 3D refinement modules to upsample the feature map to unfold the input spatial resolution and to the full temporal resolution of the input volume. This feature map is then used to produce the output segmentation masks. Global convolutional modules have been previously used for works on semantic segmentation. Here, the idea is to split up a convolutional kernel into row-wise and column-wise convolutions, which enables the usage of large kernels uh, in order to capture, uh, capture large deceptive fields. We use 3D extensions of the same, where the temporal, temporal dimension of the kernel is extended by a point-wise convolution. To analyze the effectiveness of our 3D global convolutional module, we compare it against various other modules. For this experiment, we replace the global convolutional module in the decoder with a 3D uh, convolutional layer, a non-local block, and a spatial pyramid pooling layer, and then compare, compare them um, on the Davis 2016 unsupervised 3D object segmentation task. As it can be seen from the table, the global convolutional module outperforms all the other modules by a large margin on the, J the JNF scope. Another uh, important module in our decoder is the 3D refinement module, which takes as input a lower resolution feature map 
and then upsamples it to a higher resolution. This module consists of uh, a couple of 3D convolutional layers uh, in the beginning, followed by skip connection, and then a trilinear upsampling layer. The output of the upsampling layer is then concatenated with the uh, corresponding feature map from the encoder, which then fo again follows a couple of 3D convolutions uh, along with skip connection. Such a refinement module outperforms a simple upsampling module as it can be seen from this table. So for this experiment, again, we replace the refinement modules in the decoder with a simple trilinear upsampling layer and then evaluate it on the Davis 2016 unsupervised VD object segmentation task. The, refine, the 3D refinement module outperforms the simple upsampling module uh, again by a large margin. First, we apply a method to the task of unsupervised VD object segmentation on the Davis 2016 dataset. Here, the task is to identify all the salient objects in the input video clip and to create a binary segmentation mask. Our network takes as input a clip length of 8, and hence our network is uh, near online in its primary setting. This is because it has to wait for all 8 input frames to arrive. Under this primary setting, our network outperforms all the, all the existing state of the art and also is the fastest among these methods. We can also realize an online variant of our network by generating predictions for all the overlapping input clips as and when the frames arrive. Under this setting, our network performs slightly better than the primary setting because, because we average the output logits of each, of each of the overlapping frames. The setting is also a bit slower because we have to generate predictions for more clips than in the primary setting. Next, we apply our method to the task of video object saliency. Here, the task is very similar to the unsupervised video object segmentation, which we've seen earlier. However, the metrics are slightly different. Here, MAE stands for mean absolute error, and F score is based on precision and recall. We evaluate our method on Davis, FBMS, and the Visal dataset for video object saliency task. And it, it outperforms all the existing state-of-the-art methods for all, all the data sets that we evaluate on. To conclude, we presented a novel 3D convolutional network, which learns motion and appearance simultaneously in videos. This network is end-to-end -end trainable, and we, we do not use any post-processing or multi-scale inference. We've also uh, shown state-of-the-art results on multiple data sets across multiple benchmarks, and a network runs faster than existing methods. We hope that uh, this work uh, encourages people to use 3D convolutional networks for video object segmentation, video instance segmentation, and similar tasks. I hope this work uh, interests uh, you in your line of research, and thank you for listening.